Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Explain America. I'm your host, Carmine Sabia. And folks, we're finally starting to learn the truth about the Hunter Biden laptop and the former intelligence agency chiefs who signed a letter that said it had the earmarks of Russian disinformation. We're getting that information from a former CIA chief himself. Before we get started, please make sure you like, you comment, you share, and you subscribe. Those things really help us out. If you like what we're doing here at Explain America, please send us a message on Facebook with stars. That also really helps us out. And if you're on YouTube, you can join our American Patriots program for literally one buck a month. One buck a month to help support independent media. And you see with everything going on with Tucker Carlson and and Dan Bongino that independent media is really important right now. So your support is appreciated and it goes a long way. Dan Hoffman, who was the three-time station chief in the CIA... He spoke to Fox News just today and explained why he would not sign a letter calling the Hunter Biden laptop Russian disinformation. Very simple reason. I'm going to let him explain it to you. Now that the uh, story, now that story that we promised at the top of the hour and that infamous letter that was signed by 51 former intelligence officials days before the 2020 election, casting doubt on the New York Post report on Hunter Biden's laptop, former CIA chief of station, uh, Dan Hoffman was asked to add his signature, explaining for the first time in an op-ed in the Washington Times why he said no. Dan Hoffman is a Fox News contributor, and he joins us now. Dan, this is my most interesting story of the day. I read this op-ed, and I thought, well, why didn't you tell us like a long time ago here? <laughs> so uh, this letter went out, we famously know, and here's what the, the basic finding was, that the Hunter Biden laptop story has, quote, all the classic earmarks of a Russian information operation. You had this letter circulated to you. They asked for your signature. You said no. Why? Right. I remember I got the letter October 18, 2020. And at first glance, it seemed natural to lay the blame at the Kremlin's doorstep. Remember, Vladimir Putin is in the Kremlin, and he's well known for cloak and dagger espionage operations. But at the same time, uh, there was no evidence, and the letter noted there was no evidence. And I just felt like we needed to do the forensics. It was a very convoluted story. Folks will recall that there was a laptop found at a store in Delaware. Uh, and I remembered at CIA, when we didn't have all the answers, we would task our sources to get more information so we could be more definitive. And I felt like in this case, the FBI could do those forensics. And uh, it was not up to us to speculate. So I didn't sign the letter. I typically don't put my name to other people's words. My wife was in her uh, late in her third year of fighting cancer, and I didn't have the time to go back to Michael Morell and ask him what the point was about the letter. So I just left it and uh, didn't sign the letter and didn't respond. And, and, you know. and we are still, to this day, so sorry for the loss of your dear wife. Um, you said a second ago that this didn't invite further inquiry, which is what you're right about in the Washington Times op- op-ed. You say, but the email I received from Mr. Morrell did not invite any further discussion or debate. The letter was a fait accompli. It was being passed around for signatures, not edits. I've never been one to put my name to words someone else wrote on my behalf. So this thing was cooked, and they, he was just looking for signatures. And he, you, you could have been number 52, but you said in the break that there were a lot more as well, people who didn't sign on to it. Right. There were many others who, who didn't sign it. Look, when I was at CIA, we would sit in Michael Morell's office uh, when we had a particularly difficult, challenging intelligence issue, and we would hash out all the evidence that we had, the intelligence we had, and then Michael would draw analytical conclusions with some level of confidence, low, medium, or high, and bring it to the White House. We didn't have that debate about this laptop issue. We weren't invited to debate it. And I also felt like I was somebody who was a Russia hand. I spent many, many years focused on Russia. And uh, I was a little surprised that I and others who had that same experience weren't involved in even discussing whether such a letter was was worth writing. Now, during the debate, the one debate of the 2020 election campaign, uh, now President Biden, then candidate Biden said, as we showed at the top of this, 50 intelligence officers signed on to this letter saying it was a classic Russian disinformation campaign. You write in your op ed. The American public should be careful to distinguish between retired and actively serving U.S. intelligence officers. Explain. Well, the part that I didn't know, and I'm assuming that that my former colleagues who signed the letter probably didn't know either, was that Michael Morell had discussed the laptop issue with then-campaign advisor Tony Blinken. So Michael was aware of the campaign's interest. 
And there's a straight line from that to the letter to the debate and the comment from, from then-candidate uh, Biden about the, about the laptop. And so the point that I made in the op-ed is, look, if you're serving actively at the CIA, uh, we vote. But, look, we serve under presidents for whom we voted and those for whom we didn't. When I served in Iraq, uh, look, there, half of us probably voted for President Bush and the other half didn't. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're focused on our sacred mission of recruiting spies and stealing secrets and delivering the best analytical uh, conclusions we can to the president. And that's what we do. But retired intelligence officers who wish to engage politically can do so as long as they don't uh, reveal classified intelligence. They're free to speak their mind. Uh, and that's, that's their choice. Um, and it carries with it all of the implications uh, for them because they're going to have to defend their, their public statements. And, and that's what we're seeing right now. Well, I'll tell you, your op-ed is eye-opening. There's no question about that. Everybody who's interested in this should read it. One and there you have it. The evidence doesn't exist. The evidence didn't exist. You know why the evidence didn't exist? Because it was real. The laptop was real. The things it said were real. And they didn't want to talk about that. They still don't want to talk about that. But this, this is going to be an albatross hanging around the neck of Joe Biden in 2024. That's why it's so important for you guys to vote. You've got to vote because we got to end this nightmare. And with that said, guys, I want to thank you for joining us here at Explain America. We love you guys. God bless you. Take care, everybody.